Hello, hello everybody. This is Dr. Mary Gardner with Lap of Love Veterinary Hospice. And today's Facebook Live is gonna concentrate on something called vestibular disease in dogs. Um, there's a couple of different names for this, but it's something that I find um, that most owners actually don't know about until it's something that pops up and they wonder what's going on with their dog. So what it really is, is, um, is canine vestibular disease, so CV or syndrome, syndrome, like I said, that we kind of name it all different things. It's a group of diseases that affect the vestibular system in a, a dog. And the vestibular system in a dog, and even in us actually, is, um, is basically the, the system that's responsible for correcting our imbalances. So it sends messages, there, there's receptors in our, in our brain and also in our ears that lets the body know where we are in space and if the head is a little bit wobbly, and it will send messages to the to the brain to help counter counter uh, balance that. So if you've ever been seasick um, or on a boat and you and you can't really get your footing, that's that's affecting some of these sensors that are in your ear and and in your brain. And uh, we see this often in in dogs. And so there's a couple of different kinds of causes or or even. Um, uh, uh, segments that we put this into. So we will either say, or there's categories, there's two categories. It's a, a, a central category or a peripheral category. And so, um, so the, the central one is usually like a brain tumor. So if there's something wrong in the brain that then it's affecting those, um, those receptors where then they can't actually figure out their balancing system. So that's, that's not a great one is the central one. And then there's the per peripheral, uh, which is, um, usually um, either an ear infection or some other disease, you know, with, with like a um, tissue or a mass in the ear or something like that, that could mess with those ear receptors. And then there's another kind, which is called the idiopathic um, vestibular syndrome. And, and so really it's idiopathic because we can't figure it out. And so that's how I always remember these things that we call idiopathic is that we're just idiots and we can't figure it out. But um, it's, it is a little bit frustrating because we don't necessarily have a way to fix these. So with the brain lesion um, kind, so, so the, the central version of this, it's really important that we figure out what's going on in the dog's brain. And so if, um, if this is the type that your dog has, then we'd want to do maybe an MRI or a CT just to see, is this a very large brain tumor? Is it even um, a, a, a fast growing one, or is it maybe just a benign tumor and it's something that they could live with? And then the peripheral, we'll wanna see, is it a really bad ear infection or something else that, that we could actually cure? So first I wanna talk about what are the symptoms that you may see uh, if your pet has this? And this is where um, a lot of times I'll go to homes or I'll get a phone call from a family that says, you know, my dog has had arthritis for years and has had a difficult time moving around, but all of a sudden today he can't get up. And then they feel very guilty because they think that they've let something go so long when we actually find out that it's more of a vestibular problem. Now, if they also have mobility problems, it gets to be a challenge because they're having a hard time writing themselves and they also have arthritis or they're um, weak or something like that. So it just kind of exacerbates it. So um, hello, my friends out there. Uh, one is from Mexico, so hello, my friends. So anyway, the vestibular um, disease that I wanna talk about, uh, focus a little bit more on is this idiopathic one. So what you may see your pet all of a sudden having is just um, disorientation. Maybe, they, maybe they're um, circling usually from one side to uh, you know, falling over on one side. Maybe they're actually leaning up against the wall. Because if you've ever really been on a boat where you've got that seasick feeling, you kind of, you hold on to the wall. And so, um, so you want to just, uh, just kind of be aware of that. If you see them acting a little bit weird, they may, they may be a little more dull or not as bright. Um, it's very rare that they'll ever have vision loss. And that's, that's more with the brain tumors. But um, you might see even a little bit of a facial uh, change. Uh, the two most common things, though, that we'll see is a head, a head tilt, so their head may be a little cockeyed like this. Um, and then the other thing, and it's not always, but um, you'll see their rapid eye movements. So you'll see their eyes go back and forth. So imagine if you go outside after this video and you spin around in circles and you look at yourself in a mirror and your eyes are going like that, 
that's that's what the that's why their eyes are going back and forth. So a lot of times these families will call me and say, I feel really bad because I've let my dog get get so you know so bad, and now you know I've got this guilty feeling because he can't get up anymore. And I'll say, look at his eyes. Tell me if his eyes are shifting back and forth. And if they are, then I know it's this vestibular problem. Um, so um, so there's some good news to this. But um, so getting back to which kind they have, and that's where having your veterinarian um, evaluate your pet is really important because we want to establish, is this something centrally or is it peripheral or, or this idiopathic? Um, so that way they, they can kind of determine which one it is. So if we see that your pet has a horrible ear infection, and by the way, no judgment, right? So it's not often that I look in my own dog's ears and all of a sudden they can pop up. So if they have a really bad ear infection, um, and it's usually on, you know, it's on one side and you might not have noticed it. Uh, if we could actually clear that ear infection up, so it might just be a, a, a long course of antibiotics that they need, um, a deep cleaning out of ears. I mean, when I was in general practice, I had to knock some, some, some dogs out just to get in there and get a really good cleaning. Maybe it is just a mass in their ears, so we have to maybe remove that mass if that will, will um, solve the problem. Again, if it is that central issue, then we, we, you know, if you can, then we just want to evaluate the, the type of lesion that it may be, if it's a, you know, fast growing aggressive uh, tumor or just maybe a benign tumor or something else. Um, so that you would have to do usually through a neurologist. But what about this peripheral or this idiopathic um, vestibular syndrome? And it's just like vertigo in, in humans. So that, as soon as I say vertigo, most people are like, oh, that's what you mean by that. So um, with, with, if it is vestibular, sometimes they can actually resolve in the day to, in, in a couple of days to, to maybe two weeks. Um, the problem is you have to manage this pet. And I have been to homes where it's a very large dog and they're like spinning almost. And so they're falling over, they're flipping. Um, and that's hard to watch. It's also hard to manage. If you've got a very large dog that's having this issue, um, I, I understand the struggles that it, that it could lead to. And, and sadly, I, I have had to um, help families euthanize their dog because they're just not even getting over it. Um, but it's very important to protect the pet. So we want to make sure that they're, that they're kept safe. So if you're going to be leaving for the day because we all have to work, right? So maybe putting them in a, um, I don't want to say a padded room, but kind of a padded room. So if you have a bathroom or some place small or a very large closet where you can put dog beds down and make sure that they're protected so they're not going to bonk themselves on a sharp corner or something like that. Um, so we want to make sure that they that they're safe, that they're not going to um, you know knock something off of the table that will fall on them. Um, you know, it's it's they have a hard time eating and drinking also. So um, making sure that somebody's there to help them during their their eating and drinking. They're also maybe a little nauseous because of this. If you've again ever been on a boat with seasickness, you you can be nauseous. And so there's some medications that we can give that can make them not feel so nauseous. And also anxious because this is a scary thing to these guys. And so um, we can just do a mild, a little bit of sedation for them just to kind of calm them down and help them sleep through this. Um, so there are often times that we can see that the dog recovers from this. They're more common to have it again. Um, and then also sometimes they'll end up with a, a permanent head tilt, <laughs> which is okay, right? So, so sometimes dogs will just, I'll see them walking around the street and I'll say, oh, that, that dog had vertigo. And, uh, and everyone's like, yeah, I did, how'd you know? Because it's that, it's that head tilt. So um, anyway, I just wanted to, to talk to you guys about this disease because it's actually something that most people don't know of. And again, until all of a sudden one day they call us and they say, my dog is acting drunk. And or like he's seasick. And so that's what um, the first thing that my mind goes to. And so then I'll ask about the eyes going back and forth or the head tilt. Now, they don't always have to have the eyes going back and forth, just so you know. But once I see that, I, I'm, I'm pretty sure that this is what we're dealing with. And if it's something easy to fix, like a bad ear infection, then we can clear it up and it's all good. Um, if it's something that's, you know, a little bit more severe in the brain, there's some med medications that we can give to help um, slow the progression of that and then also help them deal with these symptoms. So on our uh, website, we have a, a section in our, um, in our education section that talks about canine vestibular uh, syndrome. But hopefully this was super helpful and it was good seeing you guys. Till next time, take care.